Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Three Gun Show. Uh, this is Dave Hartman, your host, and this is a special match recon episode of the Three Gun Nation Midwestern Regional with our field correspondent, Adam Maxwell. Adam. Back from the field. Welcome back from the field, buddy. Try, trying to remember. We're, we're, going, we're going back into the past. We're going back into the past, and bit. there's been a lot of matches since then, but uh, you, were, you were instrumental in getting this match to Minnesota, um, so... Let's let's hope that memory serves. Let's hope so. <laughs> let's hope so. It was a wild ride, but yeah, uh, we uh, we we uh, negotiated or coerced or convinced Three Gun Nation that they should come north of the Mason Dixon line <laughs> and uh, and hold an event and and uh, right right away in April we weren't sure if it was going to rain, shine, or snow. Yeah, but when I, when uh, I saw that on the mat, uh, the the uh, match schedule. I was like, really? April in Minnesota. And here's the deal. Interesting. Here's here's why that happened. Um they uh we had to be in the spring due to some requirements that Three Gun Nation had. And at the club here, um we basically for club politics, where if you're involved with a gun club at all, you know there's all kinds of weird politics that go on at a gun club. Yeah. We had to have the event before um youth trap youth high school trap leagues started and the um the main club leagues started which start in the middle or the the end of april okay so we had to we had to get it in then and uh uh for the least amount of interference controversy you know whatever sure. you know that was just the date the date we had to pick and uh and they're like man man is it you know, because Minnesotans like to, to talk about, like, how nasty the weather is and, like, it's snow on the ground six months out of the year. But, people, we plant corn on the April 15th, all right? <laughs> I used to be in agriculture, all right? The insurance company lets you plant corn on the April, on April 15th. So, like, it, it ain't that bad, <laughs> you know? If it snows, it don't stick. But uh, but it, it did snow the day after. The match, so. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but um yeah, so we we had to do it really early uh, for a couple things that are made more sense on the administrative side, and yeah, I could definitely see all the people in the southern half of the country being like, "Sure, screw that." Well, especially when uh, when I was in Texas at the time, I was like, "Heck, heck there were people from Wisconsin who didn't come." <laughs> like it's too cold. I'm still having hot cocoa and watching football or whatever <laughs> yeah. they do. I don't know. All right, man. Let's uh, let's run it down. So. Take it away. All right. So we're talking about the 2017 Three Gun Nation Midwestern Regional, which took place on April 8th and 9th here at the Forest Lake Sportsman's Club in Forest Lake, Minnesota, which is just northeast of the uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul metropolitan area. It was a total time match, as is their style, using their proprietary uh, Three Gun Nation rulebook. Um it was all posted to practice score in addition to uh, their own website through the, the range log system. Oh, yeah. That's, they, I always forget about yeah, that. Yeah, they kind of have their own thing going on there. It's kind of – it's delayed. You can't – it's not real. Everybody looks at practice score right. when, when it's prize table time. But all of the, all of the information uh, does also get posted to range log yeah. as far as classifications and, and things like that go. Right. Um, they run. Uh, they run. Uh, they run on an AM PM match schedule. Half day format. Yeah, half day format, which which works pretty well for their for their style of match. Yeah. Uh, a new thing this year, they were doing two tiers of um, match fee. Oh, that's right. Which yeah. is highly controversial. Why is that controversial? Well, because well, tell us the match fees first. Match then... fee is two seventy five to walk the prize table. Okay. One hundred and fifty. To do trophy only. Okay. So then folks are like, what? so I got to pay 125 bucks to get a prize? And, you know, so there was like, there's the si the people who look at it as like, I have to pay to get a prize. And then there's the people who are like, I'm going to get a crappy prize anyway because I'm going to finish 127th. Just give me $125 and let me shoot. Yeah. You know? So the, the way I look at it is I can uh, almost shoot 
two three gun nation regionals instead of one just yes. for the uh, match fee which is the intent yeah which is the intent if you talk to the three gun nation people that is totally their intent mm-hmm. and if you're out for the prizes you're out for the you know you want to play the high stakes poker you sure. got to ante up yep and uh they took they took the cue Makes from sense. um a lot of there's uh, a lot of precedent in motorsports, mm-hmm. ra- uh, rodeo, and um, some of the cycle racing too. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I mean, in those in those sports, if you want to be eligible for the big prize, you pay the big entry. So you know, to to race motocross at at the pro level, yeah. that's one entry fee. To ride B class is something else, and to ride C class is something else. You know, so. uh, now that you mention it, when I was doing uh, obstacle racing, the Spartan race had an elite heat, and with, um, when you run a Spartan race, uh, a lot of times on some of the more difficult obstacles, there's backups, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so you're not able to run your fastest time because you got to wait for some JO that doesn't know how to climb a rope, climb that mm-hmm. rope, and come mm-hmm. down. Where if you run the elite heat, you run first, mm-hmm. um, but uh, you pretty much have like a free and open space because there's 50 dudes and most of them are way faster than you are anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. So they're trying to, they're trying to move in that direction. There are, there are lots of theories as to how to solve the, uh, the prize table question that's right. kind of plaguing the, the, um, the major match, um, event promotion is it industry. I don't know if it's I an say industry. industry. I'd say it's an industry segment. Yeah. But anyway, Niche. Those of us who are doing it, we're trying to put on good events, trying to, to get good prizes and sponsorships for everyone. The question is, how do you create the value for the sponsor, and then how do you draw the shooters? Right. Um, so this is one of the many things that 3-Gun Nation is trying to do uh, to do that. They're either making it more attainable for people who don't care about the prizes, and then the people who do care about the prizes, they can they can ante up and be eligible to win. So, So, but... You know, I mean, we are probably the largest collection of type A personalities <laughs> in the world. So yeah. Facebook just lit up when when they announced all this, and huh. and it was it was it was like the Fourth of July with all the fireworks. Interesting, but yes. All right. So um, we had 170 shooters turn out for it, which is kind of on par with most of the regional matches thus far this season. Mm-hmm. I think um, there was a little bit less at the uh, Southwest Regional. Yeah, but they were kind of in that 160, 170, 150 range. I think I think they were like 168 in Florida. Yeah, Southwest know. Regional was 169, so the, yeah, that's right on par. Yeah. The East Regional sold out, from what I understand, but that's the only one that sold out, Okay, to my, to my knowledge. Um, division winners were uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Greg Jordan in Practical. Uh, Rick Birdsall edged me out in in factory, and then uh, no hard feelings. You know, I'm over it. <laughs> Not really. I'm, <laughs> I'm coming for you, Rick. I am coming for you. Uh, Josh Froelich took hashtag only shoot open in the <laughs> in the unlimited division, and uh, and uh, Jay Carrillo took heavy, and Rob Romero beat himself in PCC. He was the only guy. Oh, nice. Rob Romero was the contrarian and shot PCC all by himself. Good for him? Because that's how he rolls. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Jay Carrillo uh, switching to heavy has mm-hmm. had a pretty awesome run this uh, this year. Yeah. Yeah, he's been killing it in heavy. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of guys, um, you know, branching out into the other divisions. Because mm-hmm. there was, you know, for the last couple of seasons, there's been a really big consolidation into practical and, yes. and TO. And... Um, I think they're, we're kind of moving in the direction of like people want to yeah want to get back out into some of these other other divisions because we have we have, have a, other guns. Too. I have a theory on that. Do we want to talk about that in a match recon episode or, or should we might save as well? It? We sure. we derail all the time. Yeah, why not? So my my theory on that is that people conglomerate it and take this with a grain of salt because I've been shooting major matches for two years mm-hmm. and only shooting three guns since 2011. So my theory is that people. Conglomerate into TAC Optics uh, or Practical if you're shooting 3-Gun Nation mm-hmm. because of the Pro Series. They wanted to be on that Pro Series in Tulsa with the you know the super fast matches and where you stack up against like the top 50 dudes in the country. And they wanted to um, have all the other reps that they do in other matches in TO, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And now that the, for all intents and purposes, that 
particular iteration of the Pro Series does not exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Now people see like, well, I'm not necessarily tied to TO. I can go shoot something else. Yep. And then the proliferation of matches now that will let you shoot a semi-auto shotgun, 9mm pistol, but just a um, a 308 rifle. Mm -hmm. That makes it also more accessible from there because you only have to buy one piece of gear. You don't have to buy a whole other shotgun or a whole other uh, nine mil or a whole other pistol. Yeah. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Well, that's, that's a good. different conversation altogether. Well, that's going to be that's going to be a short sidetrack because I pretty much agree with you. Mm -hmm. And we could also prove the inverse with Three Gun Nation because before the quote unquote pro series, right, when they were just pulling shoot off dudes out of divisions at outlaw matches right they had the opposite effect dudes were scattering into other divisions to try and win that division so they would get pulled oh. into the shoot off to win the cash oh no kidding okay. yeah dudes scattered like like fireflies <laughs> rob romero being one of them rob it was it was that was kind of a big deal when the points were shaken out and um and you know guys like rob f did the math and they're like, well, I'm too far behind in TO, but I, there's enough matches left. I can jump into heavy and make a comeback. You know, I gotcha. If I win three matches in heavy, I'm in. Ah, for, for the national shoot off. Interesting. Whatever. So, so, so it's gaming, gone both ways. Gaming does not only mean on a stage at the match. It nope. means Ga gamers be gaming, man. Gamers be it's, gaming. It's really a lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just got to embrace it. Did you choose the gamer lifestyle? I don't know that I have. Or did the gamer lifestyle choose you? You know, chicken or the egg. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Just a product of my raises, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so other opportunities at the match? Other opportunities at the match. Well, the regional series are loaded this year. Um, they have a five-stage shotgun speed shoot. Almost all the matches, they did a pistol shoot at one of them, but they they always have a, a speed shoot going on. And, he, and uh, here at the regional, it was a shotgun match? Yeah, here at the regional, it was a shotgun match. You can sign up for as many divisions as you want, and they pay out in cash. Which is awesome. Which, yeah, a lot of dudes have figured out you can you can, you can can uh, clean house on that if you shoot multiple divisions. Yeah. I, as we have established in other episodes, just like to shoot guns, so I shoot as many divisions as I can fit a, a Benelli M2 into. Right. Um, yeah, when we were at the Southwest Regional, I think you shot uh, open or unlimited. You shot TO and factory. Yes. In uh, in the same shotgun side shoot. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I shot all three divisions at nationals. I shot. Um, yeah, I shot. I shot two divisions in Texas, and I shot two divisions here. Um, oh no, I shot three divisions. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I shot. No, I don't. Not it's not important. <laughs> <laughs> I shoot a lot of the shotguns because I like shotgun, and I'm here to party. So, <laughs> I just like keep like flaking the twenty dollar bills off in front of Tanil until she tells me to stop. <laughs> okay, that's how many divisions you can shoot. Um, and then there was also the pro series. The pro series was going on here, uh, so that was a, a spectating opportunity for most, a shooting opportunity uh, for me in this instance. But uh, the pro series was going on as well mm -hmm. during during uh, during the Midwest Regional. Okay, um, so what was the match flavor of the Midwest Regional? Well, I think at this point, Three Gun Nation has kind of developed their own flavor. Right. I think they're kind of their own deal. They've they've uh, they've branded it and and uh, pretty well defined it. Um, I think I think of Three Gun Nation matches as athletic. They're they're very sharp, uh, like the you know the the angles and the lines and everything are well thought out. They they lay all their their mat their their uh, they choreograph their stage designs in advance, so everything is well thought out, colorful, um, you know sharp and square, and then um, they're they're set up for for speed. So mm -hmm. they, they, um, they, uh, they, I, I would say they have their own style at this point. You know, you can, you can either mirror it or not, but, um, it's very athletic. It's really, really what, what they're going for. Okay. And how were, uh, or what was the 
terrain like the uh the buzzword you you love terrain yes yeah. yes uh i would call it bays exploited how's that bays exploited yeah okay here here all all the bullets got to hit berms right so no matter what i mean you can let you run up on the side of the berm but you're still shooting down into the bay um they they pretty much put on a quote unquote bay style match here uh they used there's a couple areas of our range where they can use jungles or jungle run type features and still hit a berm with a rifle. Mm -hmm. Um, so there, there was a stage like that. And then, um, all the shotgun stuff was set up in, in natural terrain. They thought I came out here when they were setting up the match and they were setting up the shotgun speed shoots. And they're like, we can, we can, they're, they, uh, our club has two significant wet, uh, wetlands on it. Right. Ponds. Yeah. And the sporting clays ranges and everything are set up around these ponds. Mm -hmm. And um, as are many shotgun ranges in the upper Midwest. <clears throat> and they're like, we can just we can just shoot out there? Like, the pellets can go out into the wetland? Like, yeah. Yeah, why, why couldn't they? Like, man, that's awesome. So, we, we could never do that in North Carolina. Some places you can't do that. Yeah, yeah, no. So they thought they were, they were setting it up on the edge of the marsh just because they could, I think. <laughs> they're like this they're, they're, they're chris was feeling a little naughty like like driving stakes into 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 the cattails it was funny but yeah well that's uh last year at the generation three gun match you know they have that uh that stage where the targets are all on floating docks yes and uh i got to one i'm like well so I should put that on my shopping list yeah so the the slugs those uh those just fall into the pond and mm -hmm. they're like yep I'm like, is that okay? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, so now the pond is have a, has all this lead in it, and they're like, I'm not following. They just like not even crossing the mind where you know I'm from Colorado, so we're getting damn near as PC as as uh, California. So yeah, we're kind of spoiled with the yeah. amount of water that we have here and the oh, amount yeah. of I'll say filtration uh -huh. that goes as it moves around. Um, I would say probably if we were going to like make this club, invent this club on this land in 2017, probably wouldn't get approved. Oh, no. However, most gun clubs been around however many years. I think this club has been here since uh, the 40s or the 50s. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're grandfathered in, mm -hmm. you know. So God, um, I think of how much lead's at the bottom of that pond. This pond, not nearly <laughs> as much as some other gun clubs in our area. There's oh, really? another gun club that's a very, very active sporting clays club. And, I mean, how those ducks don't have three heads, I don't know. <laughs> there's there's a lot of lead <laughs> at the Horse and Hunt Club in that pond. Nice. OMG. So then, uh, okay, so... Bays exploited. Bays um, exploited. So yeah, I mean they're they're still using bays. We have, we have, um, I'll say eight bays, nine twenty foot tall berms, nine bays. Yeah, there's one area of the range where they're pretty symmetrical and similar size. We have one that that's actually like a three sixty or a two seventy degree yeah. bay it's that they sweet. used. Yeah. Um. So so it's it's a it's a bay. I mean they they built this range with an excavator and a D six. All right. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so it's, I can't, I can't tell you that it's a natural terrain match because there are other matches that are, you right. know, uh, you know, the, the vortex shooter source in Texas, that's a terrain match. Yep. Blue Ridge is a terrain match. Right. We, we get to use some natural features here, but it's, you know, we're still kind of playing on a, on a tennis court. Sure. So. All right. So skills utilized, what skills were utilized in the match? Uh, I think of the Three Gun Nation matches as stage chess. Okay. Okay, so they throw it out there, and it's all about your strategy of how you're going to neutralize all these targets because most of their stuff is optional. All right. They, they throw a lot of options out there for you. Yeah. And it's kind of on you to figure out what what guns are advantageous to use or what parts of your skill set you can you can utilize to put down the best time you can mm -hmm. 
rifle and pistol paper also yeah. available with a slug that yeah. type of thing yeah so you got you know you got a golf bag full of guns yep and you have to select which club is the best for this target and that's what I it like is. doing that I do too I like it a lot I like to be able to choose between my pistol and my shotgun yes for like uh, poppers and plates yep. and stuff like yep. that yep and the more I do it the more I dislike the style where they tell me what to do yeah so um, so that's, that's, what's cool. Cause you walk through these stages and you look at it and it's like, well, okay. So this is what it would look like with a rifle. Now, what would it look like with a pistol? Mm. Mm, I don't like loading my shotgun that much. So maybe I can pistol my way around yeah. that or, you know, I, I need my a- pistol over here. So I'm going to shotgun over there. Yeah. Or I can change a pistol magazine and have 23 tries faster than I can yeah. quad yeah. load or load eight. Yeah, you know, a shotgun's a sure thing, but I can miss a lot of times with the pistol in the same yep. amount of time. So, yep. so it's it's that kind of stuff that I've come to enjoy in the sport, and that's why I really like what I say the, the three gun nation style mm-hmm. of match because they've really kind of developed their own style that wasn't really around before they right. uh, before they did it in any significant certainly not on the level or you know not as a whole series like right. it is now. So, okay. Uh, what was the farthest shot and number of long range targets? Farthest shot. The beauty of Forest Lake Sportsman's Club is there's only one place to put a long range target. It is physically impossible for it to be more than two targets. <laughs> That's true. And isn't it is it? going to be somewhere between 380 and 365 yards, depending how much room they want to give people to stand around. You know, it's right. it's a 400 yard range from the bench inside the shoot house. Right. Um, so um, there isn't a whole lot of long range here. However, you did need some long range skills. Uh, ultimately, that's if I were going to blame, that's what cost me the win in factory was was my my long range performance. There was yeah. One particular target that I couldn't hit at an intermediate range for whatever reason. I spent too much time shooting at it like uh-huh. an idiot. but uh uh yeah so 300 i believe at that match where they set the we have a staircase prop Mm, i saw that yeah it's like a staircase nowhere yeah yeah it is it's literally a staircase nowhere we ripped it out of that classroom house we were recording in yeah yeah we ripped it out of there and then we kind of like put it on its own jig so it's freestanding and then we shoot off it from time to time and it it has no side rails and nothing to keep you from going on it oh yeah it's just in storage in the side. Not even, not even close to OSHA approved. I can't tell you how many times I was just staring at that thing, thinking like, I should go stand on top of that. Just a terrible idea, and I didn't do it. But right, right. But there's still time. I mean, you there's can, still time. Yeah, it's dark now. But uh, yeah, so that's 300, 365 yards is what I think it was at that match, and then uh, usually by how many? Huh? By how many? One. One at three fifty. One, one, yeah. And then so like maybe you know, one, maybe two. And for 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 like uh, our purposes, long is like two to infinity, right? Right. So, so there was so there's one at three sixty five. There's I think two or three at like two sixty five. Okay. Uh, so it's a it's a one it's a two hundred three hundred four hundred yard berm. So right. you know it works back in hundred yard increments pretty much. Right. And like you said, uh, every bullet has to impact the berm, so the targets have to be pretty close yep. to the berms. Yep. And if you if you hit the range floor, they're shutting you down. Yep, because we can't we can't skip bullets out of our range. Right. That's very bad. Mucho bad. All right, so logistics. Logistics are, I mean, not to blow it, toot our own horn, but <laughs> logistics are pretty awesome. <laughs> Here, um, as far as well, I skipped ahead to venue then, so let's. When you said logistics, I'm thinking about getting here. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Um, so we're within 30 minutes of an international airport. Oh, you're skipping to to venue? Yeah, when you said logistics, that's what my mind jumped to. Oh, okay. And yeah, then so I lo- said lo- random things that would now not make sense. In okay, so go go ahead and uh, talk so, about the venue, and we'll, yeah. we'll come so, back. So venue, we're, we're within 30 minutes of an international airport in Minneapolis-St. Paul. It's a Delta hub, so it's very easy to get here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... MSP is a de- decent airport to fly into as well. Yes, yes. And out of... And the zip ties that they use now on your Pelican case, super easy to rip off. You don't even need scissors. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we are two miles off I-35. So mm. we are 
The range itself is probably 100 feet from I-35, but to get here from the exit is about two miles. Right. So access is super so easy. 100 feet if you're brave, two miles if you're taking the surface roads. Right, right. You know, as crow flies, <laughs> Dave's, Dave's favorite term from Minnesota so far. Oh, I've as, heard it a lot. That's not crow. my favorite term. The uh, There was a bunch of other ones. Oh, send it. Still going to send it. Still going to send it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's in your fish house? <laughs> 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 All right. So, yeah. So, the venue is pretty easy to get venue's to. venue is pretty easy to get to. Um, there are some hotels in here locally within, like, within that same two miles of the range. Mm -hmm. But we're also very close to a metropolitan area. So, there's a lot available within, you know, a lot of ranges. you got to drive. 20 minutes or a half hour to get to a hotel. Right. There's all kinds of options within that circle. Yep. Uh, at here at the venue. Back to your original question though, the logistics. Yeah. So lo logistics is things like uh check-in scoring prize table walk, et cetera. Like yeah. How and I think three gun nation really has this down to a science. I mean, sometimes, sometimes their execution is, is a, is a hit or a miss, mm -hmm. but they have the formula down. I mean, the email comes out, Pretty much, you know, you could predict it almost down to the half day when Tanil's going to send the email. She's very standardized format of what she's going to tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all in there. They're telling you the round counts. They're telling you the ranges. Um, it doesn't doesn't leave a whole lot of open ended questions. You know, it's when you're supposed to be there, what time we're going to start shooting, what the round count is. Do you need slings? How many slugs are there? Mm -hmm. All that stuff. So um, they're pretty good at that. The prize tables, they, for some reason, it takes forever the, for the prize table to get started at any match. Yeah. Three Good Nation is no exception. Yeah. But it whatever time they say, just go ahead and add two hours to that. Yeah, pretty much. So any, any match. I don't understand what it is. So here's a funny thing about yeah. that. I sit with uh, uh, a lot of people that are going to walk in, like, the top 30. Mm-hmm. And listen to them say, "Oh, I got a, I got a plane to catch. I got a plane to catch." Like, dude, this is not your first three gun match. Yeah, like, are you new here? <laughs> when I book a when I book a plane, which I don't like to do, but when I fly to a match, it's like, what's the last flight out? Yep, put me on the red eye mm -hmm. because because I know that crap's running late. Yeah, and uh, you know you still got to get there and check in guns. Yeah, exactly. You got to sterilize your carry-on bag. <laughs> Make sure there's not a nine mil floating around on the bottom of that thing. You know? Always a nine mil floating around. So yeah, I don't, I don't get that at all. But yeah, no, it's um, so you know the timing and there's so many variables that go into timing. Yeah. You know, r running matches myself that, you know, I I don't really, you know, it's, it's, on one hand it's like you guys can do better. On the other hand, it's like I get it. Yep. It's something that. It's not really common knowledge happened, yep. and you know it's behind schedule. But it's it's really down to a science. They the you know the formula is in place, and uh, they usually execute on it, you know, as well or better than than any other match around the country. Sure. So, all right. So pre communication, we kind of covered uh, that. So there's an email that goes out with round count, what you need, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, yep. Any sort of other pre communication that came out with uh, this particular match. Um, no, they they kind of did some well-executed emails and then, uh, that was it in the past. They've tried like apps and yeah. live updates and things like that. that kind of fizzled out, but, um, I think, I think they're pretty good at getting the information out, uh, via email. They just kind of accept that, that, um, not everybody's going to download the app and monitor right. the app and they're not going to be the three gun Facebook. Right. At least not yet. I know they're trying, but, uh. The uh, the emails come out. The, you know they have an email list. They'll fire off an email when there's when there's pertinent information that everyone needs to know. So, mm -hmm. and I always appreciate the uh, uh, emails, and this was particularly important at the uh, nationals. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, we're uh, we're throwing out every single stage of the Dave and Adam shot today, and then uh, we're restarting you tomorrow. Um, granted, it sucked they threw out the stages at. You know, Kicking the nuts, have a nice day. Nationals. Yeah, <laughs> that was a that was a kick to the nuts, kick to the psyche right there. But that was information you need because we didn't expect to start until uh, the afternoon that day. Yeah. And they restarted us in the morning. Yeah. So that is one of those times where it's like, oh, I'm I'm very grateful that they, you mm -hmm. know, do the email communication. 
And I've been at other matches where they're like, oh, yeah, we'll email everyone tonight. Don't worry. You know, we'll figure it out. We'll let everyone know. Mm-hmm. Nine o'clock. Ten o'clock. Yeah. Eleven o'clock. Crickets. It's like, I'm going to bed. Yeah. So you know? I don't know if this has ever happened to you. But, and this this is a woe is me problem to have, but mm-hmm. I've been uh, to matches where um, I did not sign up via practice score. Mm-hmm. And um, so they either don't have my email address or did not manually put me into their email list. So I get no oh, match no. updates. And no. Yeah, that one's friggin' difficult when everyone's like running somewhere and you're like, Hey guys, where are you going? It's like a third world country, no resources. Huh? Yeah, it's like thank God I like stepped out of the uh, the trailer to see what everyone was up to. You know, yeah, it's like I should have been over there with my guns at this time and mm. and no email to to speak of. So that sucks. Yeah. So the people that do you utilize the uh, email list in practice score or their own email list, mm-hmm. very grateful for. Yes. Yeah. All right. How was the staff? Staff. I mean. I'm biased because half of the staff was people that I um, work with a lot here right. running matches, and I somewhat conned them into taking the <laughs> RO class, and and then, and then by default they got roped into to run in the match. So that's unique. Most of the time, or traditionally, or in the past, three gun nation has flown in their own ROs, and they did to this match too. So there's there's kind of a mix. Um, because they know how many people they need. They get a feel for how many people they can get locally and how many of their traditional people plan on traveling to the matches, and then they kind of gauge who they have to bring in. You know, I got I got opportunities to go to other matches on, on their schedule because they were short on ROs, and so mm, they kind of mm-hmm. put the word out, and, oh, yeah, I'm game. Um, <clears throat> so I would say there was, there was a lot of, of our local dudes who uh, who stepped up, and I'm really grateful to all those folks, um, it was it was a pretty positive experience to them, and and uh, like I said, I've, I'm really proud, really proud of the group we have have here uh, around our core group. And then they they flew in a lot of their their traditional traveling ROs as well, mm-hmm. and you know, which is fun to see all those familiar faces. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's part of what you're getting too. I mean, yeah. like when you when you roll up to. When you roll up to Jason Byerly's stage, you know what you're gonna get. Yeah, you know, because you've seen him before. Wiseman. Yeah, Wiseman. You know what? You Mark know what Wynn. you're gonna get. You know. Yeah, all those people. You know, so uh, you do. It's a little bit less of the trying to figure these dudes out. It's like yeah. you roll up. It's like, oh yeah, I know this guy. He's. Oh, these he's, guys aren't standing uncomfortably close to me. They must be professionals. Yeah, yeah, they must. These guys know what they're doing. He knows the book. He calls a tight match. Whatever, whatever Chris says, I'm gonna, I'm good with it. You yep. know, he isn't, he isn't on his own thing. So, um, so, so then, uh, um, this just popped in my head. You mentioned the RO class. Let's, uh, let's take a little sidetrack again and talk about that. Yes. So, um, just in case, you know, someone's thinking of getting a three gun nation match, their rain one note ranger want to get certified. They want to know what it's like. So mm-hmm. tell us about that RO class that three gun nation ran for the, uh, the local staff. Well, um, they started doing them last year. I don't remember how many they did. But uh, part of the conversation when we were when we were talking about them coming here is like, is I asked them if they would do an RO class because currently Three Gun Nation is the only three gun specific range officer curriculum. Mm-hmm. Most of us have been, you know, we've taken the USPSA class. I actually took the IDPA class many years ago. That was kind of how I got started ROing. But like, there wasn't a three gun specific. Mm-hmm. format before so you really got either got brought up from another sport or you got mentored yeah through it's like oh hey here's a timer here's how you do this you <laughs> shotgun know. goes barrel down <laughs> oh yeah hey hey john you know the rules um so here time us you know so um so i really wanted them to bring an ro course to um to the match and and uh be it me asking for it or they were planning on doing it anyway. They said, no, we're going to do one at every regional. Cool. I was like, sweet. Okay. So they're coming and it's free. So now I go to all my A-list guys and I'm like, please, if, if there's any way you can take this class, even if you're not going to work the match, if there's any way you can take this class, please come and take it so we can build our volunteer base, you know? 
And well, and that's what they're doing too, right? Yeah. They're offering free RO classes that builds their volunteer base all over the country. Right. Right. So, you know, so we, you know, we had a lot of, I have, we've built a lot of new interest in three gun here in the last year. Mm-hmm. There's, and so they're past kind of the tadpole stage of three gun. Like now, now they're comfortable shooting three gun and they want to help. And so here was the chance to get the tools that they need to help. And, you know, an RO class basically is going through the rule book, you know? Um, so it's, it's a little bit more involved in this, but it's basically, I mean, when Rob gathered us all around, he started at the front and he went all the way until he got to the classifiers class, you know, once you get to the classifiers and that's not really running a match anymore. That's just admin stuff. Right. But they really, they just went kind of line by line safety stuff. And then as, as things come up, you know, when they get to the part about chamber flags, that's where we get into the chamber flag discussion. Like, okay, you know, do they need a chamber flag? Uh, you know, are you going to DQ someone because they don't have a chamber flag? No, you're not going to DQ someone because they don't have a chamber flag. But we need to create the culture that we need chamber flags because of because of the incident, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, they just talk about 180s and all that stuff. And uh, But they just go down the list. It's not going to take two hours like, like they advertise. It's going to take four. So just go ahead and plan on that. But um, just like scoring. But you know, it was it was you know, it, it's a good class, and it you we we can discuss some of the things that come up, you know, and it shines a little light on things in a in a way that you haven't thought about it before. But you know the the RO class is explaining basically it's kind of like it's kind of like your carry permit class for those who who do the carry thing. I mean, it's the rules, it's the implications, it's the laws, it's you know, so the things that are going to come up, all right, if you're going to RO, you are responsible for both the um, the objectivity and authenticity of the scores. You are responsible for the safety of that squad as they shoot this stage, you know. We're all, we're all grown-ups playing games with guns, you know, mm-hmm. and you're, you're what's standing between fun and chaos. You know, and, and, and an ambulance coming coming today. Right. So, so it's a serious job. You know, it requires objectivity and a mind towards safety and things like that. And all that's spelled out. <laughs> if for no other reason, sitting through this class was worth it to see Rob air gun with a 1970s snow shovel. Because <laughs> he's standing there, he's going to the park. Did he look like super cool doing it? It was awesome. I could I could not get a picture without him noticing, but I could sell it for a lot of money. <laughs> it was it was awesome because he's sitting there, he's reading, he's reading, and and all of a sudden he he needs a gun, right? He needs right. something to demonstrate a gun. He looks to his left, nothing. Looks to his right. Oh, hey, there's a shovel. It's it's straight out of you know Charlie Brown. <laughs> right, and he just picks it up, and he's got the big blade under his shoulder, <laughs> and he's like, he's just, "You're gonna put it down on the table board if I bump it." And then the shovel falls on the ground. <laughs> he's just cracking up. I, I was. It was awesome. It was, but that was that was probably the best part of the class. Was watching Rob <laughs> Airgun with a snow shovel. Rob Romero with a snow shovel. Awesome. Yep. He's he's grandmaster with them as well. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he lives in Georgia. So, well, maybe he's not. He probably, I don't know if how good he is at shoveling snow. Probably not very good. But he can three-gun with a snow shovel like nobody's business. <laughs> you could say he invented it. <laughs> so. I love you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell us about the uh, the fun factor or the Adam Maxwell factor. Adam factor. Did we decide what we're calling this? We didn't. Max factor. Didn't we need to be like a lot less dehydrated? When we yeah, come I know. Up with that, probably we should probably not do that after a match. We'll do a brainstorming when we're not shooting a match. Mm, yeah, we'll, have, we'll Skype on it later. <laughs> <laughs> FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> um, Snapchat. What fun? What is the fun factor again? It's just the fun factor. Let's look at the template. Uh, I'm still still green. The fun the factor moment. is highly subjective. And it is just how you felt about the the stages of the match. Uh, how much fun did you have? One to ten, you know, five stars, 
whatever, that kind of thing. What was the most fun part of it? What was the least fun part of it? That sort of thing. Well, the fun factor for me. So let, let's, let's, uh, let me give you an example. Yes. So your favorite match on the planet, Iron Man. Iron Man. So if I said, Iron Man what's the life. fun factor of the Iron Man? You'd say, through the roof, I got to go on a zip line and shoot targets. Yep. So that's what I'm looking for. What I like about the Three Gun Nation matches is they are they're hammer down, high speed, high energy stages. Mm-hmm. So there's always it's it, they're fast, not fast in that they're short short, you know times mm-hmm. per se, but but they're 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 set up for racing. I mean, constantly moving. It, we're gun racing is what we're doing. Right. You know, there's there's definitely marksmanship involved, and there's hard shots, but they they always have that the sense of urgency to go fast. You 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 are literally trying to burn down a stage mm-hmm. instead of trying to pick your way through it or negotiate some obstacle. Right. So that's what I that's what I love about all the three gun nation matches. This one included. So. Okay. Funny things that happen at the match. You know, there probably were, but it's, it's so far in the past. <laughs> it's been so many, many matches in between. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was really funny that they were, they, were pounding those, they were pounding those shotgun targets into the marsh and thinking that was the greatest <laughs> thing ever. I don't think they, you know, like there were a lot better places on the range probably to execute a shotgun speed shoot, mm-hmm. but it was kind of like the... The guilty pleasure, like, yeah. oh, we, you're going to let us set it up over there? Oh, hell yeah, we're going to set it up over there. <laughs> no, no, we don't We don't want to use that, that flat that flat open space. Or, no, no, we're going to. That gonna, flat, dry, open space. No, we wanna, yeah, we want to use, use this part because it's going to look cool in pictures. Um, um, I don't know. There's. I don't have any good stories. I'm not, I'm not going to flounder around trying to come up with one. But, uh, okay. There always, there's always funny stuff going on around all of these matches. Of course. So, all right. So, Adam, anything you want to add to your your match recon of the Three Gun Nation Midwestern Regional? I yeah, I can't can't wait for him to come back. Um, it was it was hard bringing him here. It was an uphill it was an uphill battle on all fronts uh, to get him here. But now that they're here. Uh, they loved the range. They loved. You know the uh, the support they got. I know uh, the Forest Lake Sportsman's Club was really happy uh, with with how they conduct them, themselves while they're here, and I know our local fan base or you know, our local base of shooters is very excited for them to come back next year. So, um, so I, I I can't wait for them to come back. It was it was a good time, and and the energy around the match was was intoxicating. So I want to want to keep it rolling. Awesome. All right, well, this has been a special match recon episode with field correspondent Adam Maxwell. Adam, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for your inform- information, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dave. Always, always fun to, to do these with you. Unload show clear.